Hello, everyone. Uh, Karen Winolingo here, head of uh, solution engineering at Itential, and I'm joined by Darren. Um, and we're going to be covering of network automation assurance is something that's going to drive, you know, enterprise enterprises towards what they're trying to go after. Right. So uh, let's kick it off. Um, there you go, Darren, if you want to quickly cover this. OK, so um, hopefully, folks, you've recognized the diagram. Right. What what just to recap, I suppose what we're saying here is that that changes are complex because networks are not just networks, they're networks of networks. And so you've got that complexity of all of the multiple domains. So Itensure as an automation platform is going to help you look after the change flow across all of those network of networks using multiple sources of truth and the data for the flow and then being able to um, interact with whatever operational um, processes that you might have in order to deliver that change through ticketing and then giving feedback through chat and, and uh, various of the notification mechanisms. So what we did was we put together a bit of a demonstration of how IP Fabric then can bring that information out that we've just talked about and, and measure this, this success of a change to, to, cause, um, to, to validate those sources of truth and to make sure that we're able to trigger actions as a result of whether these things are successful or not. So our demo, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to fill in some of these boxes, all right? We've got iTensure as the automation platform. What that's going to do is going to read some data from, from Netbox. Um, it's then going to uh, validate that data using what's uh, IP Fabric state in the network. Um, it's then, we're then going to be able to uh, basically maintain all of that through a, a ServiceNow workflow. So there'll be a, a, a kickoff in ServiceNow and some change requests there, and we'll track the, the progress of the uh, of the workflow through there. We're going to be writing into some security devices, some some switches. I hope the demo gods are with us on this one. Um, and the output's going to go to Slack and to Microsoft Teams to uh, to just really show how how a how a genuine operational process might work. So, as part of this demonstration, and you guys probably saw it earlier, right? We actually kicked it off um, from Git as part of the pipeline. And as Chris mentioned in the previous session is, um, how can we expose such automations that traverse multiple domain? In this case, integrating with an assurance platform in order to help drive um, you know, certainty that it's actually gonna work, right? So in this case, what we're actually doing is exposing this automation through ServiceNow, which is another way that folks actually you know, make requests into the network. So as soon as I jump into that, um, we'll kick the request off and then we'll kind of traverse into the platform to kind of show you all the modular automations uh, that we have uh, built with IP Fabric as a team um, and how it actually starts to integrate into different sources of fruit in order to actually drive the change as well as the assurance bit of it. So let me change the screen. And uh, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and this is so this is service now. I'm pretty sure uh, most of y'all have already seen it. So we're, what we're going to do is dive right into the automation catalog. These are some of the network services um, that, that are already onboarded here. The one that we're actually gonna kick off is the application connectivity service, right? So in this case, what we're doing is there's a team uh, and you know, for an enterprise, there are multiple sites and this is the accounting department, right? So what they're wanting to do is they want um, connectivity across a network to their data sources because they are trying to host an application uh, and uh, to provide that to their consumers. So in this case, you know, obviously there are multiple drop downs and you can enhance and, and incorporate that as you go, but let's go ahead and kick it off. And as part of this automation, we're also gonna focus on change management because that's a critical part, right? Making a change into a network is, uh, you know, it has consequences if you don't have approval and pre-checks and post-checks. So let's go ahead and kick this thing off. I'll go ahead and order it and takes me to the next screen, right? So I'm still within service now. My next task would be to move this particular uh, rhythm into work in progress. So at this state, as soon as I click save, what happens is ServiceNow is leveraging Itential's open API in order to kick off the application connectivity service automation, right? Similar to what the Git pipeline did. So as soon as I hit save, um, we will see a job ID come back. So in this case, ServiceNow as an entity could track what's actually happening, right, as part of the change management. And because we have two-way binding between the systems, we can also provide documentation that Darren mentioned, right? As we're making changes, as it potentially things are being successful or failures, we're capturing that as an audit log within Snow uh, so you can expose that to your customers. 
So um, first things, what we're actually doing within the automation is uh, if we go back to the notification, the first step is uh, it's actually going to, you know, drop a notification here and I might have to refresh it. There you go. So as you notice, uh, there is a brand new notification for whether it's a security team or app IT team. Uh, so in this case, because change management are required and approvals are required, I would actually have to go into this snow ticket again um, to see what's actually happening in there, right? So it's actually at an implement step. And as you notice, we have already taken some actions on the network, right? First things first, we're actually going and pulling inf interface information and IP information. But what Darren can also kind of hit on is um, just because we're going to a source of truth and pulling an IP address, we still don't know if it's actually really active in the network and can we use it, right? That's that's a big part. So let me quickly actually go into the job, uh, Darren, and we can quickly sure. hit on that. All right, good job manager. And let's take a look at what this automation looks like, right? So currently it's in the last stage, but I'll, um, I'll have Darren kind of explain the middle two pieces. Sure. But yeah, so they, this is where we're we'll talking about this source of truth validation piece, right? So, so on the the, the workflow, um, the task on the left hand side there is going and fetching um, uh, the next available IP address in the subnet that's allocated to that department in that location that we we pull through from service now. So it's a call into Netbox to go and and, and fetch that that detail. But then we're just filtering through the Netbox, the Netbox query. In through service that's, so, yeah, so, that is correct. So Itential is integrating into NetBox and pulling the available interface or an IP. Like but, right. from the ticket, how do you know which sub? So that's the point. It, that is correct. The data comes from service now, now. into the flow. Yep. And then we use that data to, to formulate the query into NetBox Box. to say, go fetch the VLAN, go fetch the details. Okay. So then once we've got the response from, from NetBox, we can go to, to IP Fabric to say, actually, is that IP address actually available? Is, are we, we're validating the information that's in the, the source of truth in case something's changed, in case someone's manually allocated something and started using it. Because IP Fabric has the information about the network as it stands, we can use it in that way. So once we've gone through that process, we reserve the IP and the tasks to the top here are the, the notification tasks you've already seen. Yep. Then we come in down to the next the next change, and this is very similar. This task is is basically going to the netbox again. This time, asking for an interface on a switch in that location for us to configure. We take that information. We go again to IP Fabric and say, "Is that interface available? If it is, then great. We can we reserve it and continue. If it's not, it will go back to netbox and ask for the next one, having notified that it's not available. Yeah. So it's all about this 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 idea of you, how much you can trust that, that your documentation is up to date effectively and whether you want to automatically go ahead and do that. We could have just taken all of the data from IP Fabric and pushed it into Netbox. And, and in some cases, you might want to do that in an initial, initial load. But in this instance, it helps to work, work it as part of the flow. Yep. And going into the last part, which is the... IP yeah, path I'll, uh, I'll go through this as well, shall I? Yep. So the, the, uh, this, this last segment is the, um, the, the verification the change has been completed. So what we've done is we've gathered this information about IP address. We've gathered the interface information and the switch information from Netbox. We've actually executed change on, on the switch in question. It's the Cisco switch. We've brought the interface up. And then what we do is we, we go back to IP Fabric, update its snapshot, and check to see whether something that plugged into that interface with that IP address would be able to access the service that we're trying to provide connectivity for, right? So that's that's what's going on here. And so we've done, the, the, here's the refresh of the snapshot. Here's that path lookup. So that's the same as the path lookup that we were showing in the UI. We're now accessing over the API. And there's actually four different possible outcomes here. One is that it's successful, which is the, the route through the middle here where it would just update the snow ticket, close it, job done. Clearly that's not happened here because we've got some colors down the bottom, but we'll come to that in a second. These, these other two evaluations here, if you just hover over one of them, there we go. So the first one there shows whether, if there's an, an ACL somewhere in the path that's blocking traffic from happening, this will pick it up. 
and this will then uh, basically kick off another task, which in this case is another is an update to the work the uh, the service now ticket. Yeah, question yeah. about this just bef between the logic yeah. right there where we're doing the path lookup. Sure. Would it be possible? I don't know where the data exists, but would it be possible to then do an actual device type check? Let's say I do access the VLAN, Absolutely. I turn it up, I expect a PC, I got a phone. Yep. Somebody plugged in the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. Can roll back from. Absolutely. It. So where where would the device look up? That's a that's a really good question. So um, when when uh, the the port gets turned off, if something's connected to that port, the port the interface comes up. Obviously, IP Fabric does its is has done its snapshot update, right? So it IP Fabric knows what now is connected to that port based on OUI of MAC address and, and if it's CDP, if it's a, a Cisco phone or whatever. So we'll have that information. So we could have another loop. We could, we yeah. completely could, yeah. You could insert another check into there to say, yeah, that is what I expected it to be on there. Absolutely. Any more? Right, cool. Thanks for that, Josh. That was a good one. Um, the, so, so the other evaluation task here in the middle is if there's a forwarding problem. So in this case, if there's no MAC address in, in uh, the tables for an X top, or if there's no routing table entry or anything like that, this is basically the packet's never going to get where it's got to go because for some reason it's falling into a black hole. So IP Fabric's path lookup has given us all of these options. It's also given us the one that's where we've hit, which is basically there's a zone-based firewall rule in the way of the of the the, uh, the path. And so what we what we've done here, we've created a bit of a special. We've done the update to the snow ticket, but now what we've done is automatically we've gone back to service now to create a request item to, for the security team to say, yeah go ahead and, and allow us to open up the firewall rule for this additional device. So, yeah, exactly. And as, as you can see, right, from a business logic perspective, there are often, depending on where that change impact is happening, you might have to involve that specific team. So in this case, we're able to leverage uh, a reusable automation to do this for the firewall team. So at, at this stage, you know, this specific automation is complete. What we're, what we're going to do is go back quickly go back uh, to service now. And as part of the documentation, you'll notice uh, post you know, um, application of the IP and the interface. When we ran that path lookup, as Darren mentioned, uh, based on their path lookup, it says that the traffic cannot flow. So very quickly, I'll just click into the IP Fabric uh, portal here, and it will actually show you this little map and highlight visually where that problem might be. And what happens is once we determine what that problem is, it actually invokes an automation back into iTential to go remediate that issue. So you can move the automation forward, right? Which is to actually provide the solid connectivity that the customer is looking for. Yeah, so this just so. proves the point of, of what we were just saying. From a, from a UI perspective, it's that same path that, the, that was done over the API. And if you just scroll it to the right there, can't, yep. yeah, you, you can see very clearly the red firewall here. Um, we can drill into that and we can show that that's, there's a firewall rule on there that needs to be updated and that was causing the problem. So, yep. so we go into this, yeah, go for it. Right up. And it's, there we go. So it's, so it's this firewall rule here is showing us red. And if we click through on here, you can see we're hitting this deny any uh, rule at the bottom that's highlighted. But this rule on the, the line above here as a group called PCI clients, which is going to allow the devices that, that, uh, to access this service that we're trying to get to. So this is the one that needs to be updated. Perfect. And if we go back, right, the, the important thing is one, you have to notify the team that has to make the change. So as part of the automation that we baked in, the first thing is it actually dropped notification to, for the firewall team. And instead of just going ahead and making that change in the, in the firewall, I think it's critical that we enable them to follow the change management process because they might deny that change. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and click on their snow ticket. Um, and <clears throat> I'm just going to close my ticket and go home. <laughs> it's a security team problem. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be the process, that's right? right. <laughs> and, and that's the beauty of it because you can make that. That's right. That's be what it wants to be. <laughs> the... <laughs> question. Can you also predefine a couple of sets of rules that are allowed by default? For the changes so that you don't even have a change request it's a standard operating procedure yes and only generate an exception when there's something changed outside the predefined rules 
Yes, absolutely. So like those... adding a PCI client is a standard operating procedure. Correct. Exactly. Not even bother. Doesn't with require. Team. Well, that's, exactly. that's exa in fact the original version of this, this demonstration <laughs> had exactly that. Yes. It was it was create this rule, but just just authorize it and let it go. Yep. But we wanted to leave this step in to show that yep. you were able to. That the automation isn't just about automation of the of the the, no. the actual elements of it. It's as much bringing people into the process and making sure that it adheres at least to the organizational approach. So, but to your point, absolutely, uh, because various organizations have different level of criticality in the network changes. So if this one is not that critical, you just automatically run through without any inter intervention. Yeah. Yep. So in this case, you know, just like we did it for the initial request, I'll just move this into work in progress. And this actually kicks off another modular automation specifically focused on adding the IP to the firewall group. So that way the connectivity actually starts flowing, right? So this is a decision that the security engineer made. And what we're going to do is go back here um, and take a look at the job status. Let's log in. So you'll notice this is a, a brand new automation that was kicked off specifically just to make that change. And when we quickly look into it, uh, right now it's doing a path lookup. So it has successfully uh, provided an update, which is a documentation within the CR. Uh, and we have actually modified within the firewall and added that IP to the firewall group. So that went successful, but just because we did it, we also want to make sure that we integrate into IP Fabric to actually see, hey, have we done the right thing? Is it actually going to flow all the way through? So, so just, yeah, just yeah. On, on, the, uh, on that automation uh, task there, we, we Previously, it was a Cisco switch that we updated. This time, it's a Juniper firewall, right? So, so it's completely different, um, completely different configuration approach, but ultimately um, built into the same process. So, and you can see that, where are we? we are it's in the delay. Uh, so it has delay, right? Okay, good. So yeah, so now we've, we've gone through this process again. We've made a change to the network. We've, we've gone to IP Fabric and said, right, IP Fabric, go and update your snapshot because we need to then, once that's completed, go again with the path lookup. So we, um, IP Fabric is in the process of, and I'm just looking across there to see, see it's just in the process of discovering that change. The, the path, yeah, the, the, the snapshot update's an interesting thing because obviously we talked before about the fact that, um, that the network is a network of networks. You've got all of these devices and you need to understand what's going with all the devices to see if a flow is gonna work end to end. So when you update a snapshot with one device, you need to make sure that everything around it is uh, accepts that a change has been made. So that, that change doesn't impact one device, it impacts the things around it as well. So what we have to do is gather the data and then run the calculations in order to make sure that the mod we're accurately modeling the behavior. Yeah. So. Is there a way to go back and sort of walk through historical snapshots? Yeah, well, so, so in IP Fabric, yeah, so in IP Fabric, what's happened along the way here is we as you create a new snapshot, you can compare it with the last one, with the last one, with the last one. So typically the way you would handle snapshots in IP Fabric, you would schedule them to happen every day, three times, four times a day, whatever whatever works for, for you, the customer. But then as part of the change process, you can do partial snapshots, complete snapshots on an ad hoc basis. So you'd use it in exactly this way, right? Validating change as you go, but also to see what the changes have been over time and, and do that comparison that we saw before. Yeah. So in this that case, it, it, it has successfully gone through. Okay, good. So I'll just go ahead and refresh this so that we can actually see which path it took. So as you notice this time around, from an evaluation perspective, uh, it passed the business rule of success, right? So it actually uh, look, did the path look up, leveraging the APIs, and it has taken this path, which was our success path, and it has successfully closed the ticket. The first time around, it ran into the zone firewall issue, and because we have proactively based on the feedback from the assurance platform, we made the change, redid the lookup, it has successfully closed it out. So if I now go back uh, to the original ticket uh, to change request and take a look yeah, at the I notes. Just, just scroll up, to just check on the status there. I think it- Oh yeah, it, it yeah. successfully yeah. closed it. So, you know, when you talk about change management, instead of someone having to swivel chair uh, on a successful change or, or you know, disapproved change, uh, we're also making sure we're leveraging APIs across the stack to do that proactively. And as you can see, um, we have a notification here that says the traffic is flowing as per the request. So if I click into uh, the IP Fabric portal again, 
uh, it's going to rebring up that end-to-end -end path. And this time around, we're going to see that it's green. I love your confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but he's right, of course. Yeah. So, um, and if you, yeah, if you, you can open it up the details and we, yep. can, we can actually show the. So, there we go. As you so noticed. showing green, showing that it's permitted. And if we click yep. through, you can see now we've hit that items. permit www rule. Yep. Here's our item. And if you scroll to the end yep. of the list, the this is the one that we've just added in.